Welcome to the deep dive. Uh, if you're listening, you're probably thinking about a graphics card upgrade, right? And this MSI GeForce RTX 5060 Ti 16G Inspire 2 XOC. Mm. Well, that name keeps coming up. It really does. So we're going to dig into what makes this card, you know, special. Exactly. Because I think for a lot of people, the big thing is getting really solid 1440p gaming. You know, that nice balance between sharp visuals and uh, smooth gameplay right. without completely breaking the bank. And this card, it seems aimed right at that sweet spot. Okay, yeah, let's get into it then. This MSI card, it's part of NVIDIA's, uh, the new RTX 50 series. Blackwell architecture. That's the one. And the word is it's bringing like serious gaming chops, but maybe at a price point that's a bit more reachable. That seems to be the idea. Yeah. So our mission today is basically to uh, get under the hood, pick it apart and see if this really is the upgrade people should be looking at. Sounds good. And this specific MSI version, the Inspire 2 XOC, it's got some, well, interesting choices. Maybe we start with the physical stuff, like how big is it? Will it actually fit? Good call. Yeah. Nobody wants a beast of a card that can't even slot into their PC. Um, from what we're seeing, it seems pretty manageable. Mm -hmm. It's listed as dual slot, but I guess technically it takes up about 2.3 slots of space. And it's around, what, 240 millimeters long? Yeah, about that, which is pretty good news. So that should slide into most, you know, standard mid-tower cases without too much fuss, right? Exactly. That compatibility is definitely a plus point. And uh, to keep it cool, MSI's gone with a dual axial flow fan setup. Okay, dual fan. So these push air straight through. Pretty much, yeah. Designed to move a good volume of air over the heat sink efficiently. So two fans working together instead of one big one. The info we have calls it an efficient dual fan cooler with a compact heat sink. Sounds like they're aiming for good airflow. That's the goal. Often two fans can cool things more evenly, potentially run a bit quieter too, compared to a single fan having to spin really fast. Makes sense. And cool. connecting it up, what ports are we looking at? Uh, yeah, connectivity looks pretty future-proof here. You're getting three DisplayPort 2.1B connectors. Three. Oh. And one HDMI 2.1B port as well. Wow, okay, so for anyone with like a really high-end monitor or planning to get one, those are serious specs. We're talking potentially, what, 8K at 120 hertz? Yep. Or even 4K at a crazy 480 hertz. 480 hertz. With DSC, of course, display stream compression. Right, that clever tech that squeezes more data down the pipe. Exactly. And VRR support, too. Variable refresh rate for that smooth, tear-free gaming. So, yeah, definitely ready for modern, high-spec displays. Okay, impressive on the outside. What about the inside, the connection to the motherboard? It uses a PCI Express 5.0 by 16 interface. That's mm -hmm. the latest standard for the slot. But it actually operates it by 8. Okay, hold on. So PCIe 5.0, but running it by 8, not by 16, is, is that going to matter much for gaming right now or, you know, soon? Uh, honestly. For almost all games today, the difference between PCIe 5.0 running it by 16 versus by 8 is, well, it's tiny. Practically negligible in terms of frame rates. Really? Yeah, it's more about being compatible with the newest motherboards and the platform. Maybe, way down the line, some super demanding application might see a tiny benefit from by 16 but for gaming, nah, you won't notice a bottleneck there anytime soon. Phew. Okay. Good to know. And power. How much juice does it need? Just a single 8-pin PCIe connector. Pretty standard stuff for a card in this uh, performance bracket. Makes things simpler. Definitely easier for power supply choices. Now, memory. That's always huge for gaming, right? right? Especially higher resolutions. This one has 16 gigabytes of GDDR7. That's right, 16 gigs, a really healthy amount. Why is that much RAM important, say, for 1440p? Well, that large pool of memory, and it's fast GDDR7 too, clocked at 28 gigabits per second. Um, it's on a 128-bit bus. Okay, 128-bit bus, that's like the highway width for the data. Kind of, yeah. It determines how much data can move at once. So all that together gives you a peak bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second. Of 448 gigabytes, okay. And for 1440p, especially with high-res textures or in big open-world games, having plenty of fast memory means the GPU isn't waiting around for data. Smoother loading, less stuttering, that kind of thing. Gotcha. More data, flowing faster, yeah. smoother games. Makes sense. What about the actual speed of the GPU core? The clock speeds... I saw something about an extreme performance mode and a gaming mode. Yeah, the specs mention an extreme performance mode hitting up to 2,632 megahertz, which you enable in the MSI software. And then there's a gaming mode boost of 2,647 megahertz. Oh, 
Wait, the extreme mode is slightly lower? That seems odd. It does seem a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? Uh, the thinking there might be that the extreme mode focuses more on sustained speed under heavy prolonged load. Maybe it sacrifices that absolute tiny peak clock for better stability, or perhaps it uses a different fan profile. Oh, ah, okay. Consistency versus peak burst. Possibly, whereas the gaming mode might allow for that slightly higher peak in, say, less demanding moments. What's also key is the TDP, the thermal design power. It's rated at 180 watts. 180 watts. Hmm. For the kind of performance we're expecting, that actually sounds pretty decent, pretty efficient. It does. The documentation even highlights an attractive performance per watt uplift compared to the older 40 series cards. So what does better performance per watt actually mean for the average user, besides maybe a tiny bit off the electricity bill? Well, the big thing is less heat for the same performance, right? Right. So the cooling doesn't have to work as hard, potentially meaning quieter fans, and maybe less overall heat being dumped into your case, which is good for all your components. Okay, efficiency matters. Right. Now, the big question, how does it actually play games? Exactly. That's what it's all about. And the initial reports, uh, the benchmarks we're seeing, they look pretty promising. We're talking comfortable frame rates, like solidly above 60 VPs at 1440p. Even in really demanding games, things like Cyberpunk 2077, Metro Exodus. And this is without using stuff like DLSS upscaling. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Native 1440p above 60p is in those titles. That's, yeah. that's actually pretty strong. It really is. And if you compare it to... Uh, its direct predecessor, the RTX 4060 Ti 16 GB version. Yeah. The 5060 Ti looks like it offers a, you know, a solid step up, a noticeable mid-range performance boost. So if you're coming from an older card or maybe even a lower end 40 series, this could feel like a really significant upgrade. Okay. What about people still gaming at 1080p? Maybe they've got one of those high refresh rate monitors, like 144 hertz or more. Is this card just overkill then? Not necessarily overkill, no. Uh, the benchmarks are suggesting frame rates consistently in the like 80 to 100 bit of P's range. Even at 1080p max settings. Yeah, across most big AAA titles maxed out at 1080p. So it's definitely got the power to feed those high refresh displays and give you that super smooth, really responsive feel, even if you haven't made the jump to 1440p yet. All right, so strong performance pretty much across the board there. Yeah. Now, NVIDIA always talks about DLSS. This card gets the latest, right? DLSS 4. With frame generation. It does, yeah. DLSS 4. Can you break that down? What does frame generation actually do for the gamer? Okay, so DLSS itself, deep learning super sampling, it's like a smart rendering trick. The card renders fewer pixels, maybe at a lower resolution. Right. And then uses AI to upscale the image, making it look sharp, almost like native resolution, but running much faster. Frame generation, that adds another layer. It looks at the frames the GPU is rendering. Okay. And then uses AI to actually create whole new frames in between them. Frames that the GPU didn't render itself. Whoa. So it's literally generating extra frames out of thin air. Kind of, yeah. Based on analyzing motion and the rendered frames. And the result can be a massive perceived jump in frame rates. The info suggests maybe up to, what, 40% boost in games that support it? 40%? That's huge. Which? But there's always a catch, isn't there? I hear people talk about added input latency with frame gen. That is the potential trade-off, yes. Because you're inserting these AI-generated frames, it can sometimes add a very slight delay between, say, you moving your mouse and seeing the result on screen. Hmm. So maybe not ideal for super twitchy, competitive shooters. Mm, it might be more noticeable there, yeah. Though NVIDIA keeps working to reduce that latency. But for many other types of games, especially visually rich single player ones, the smoothness it adds is often worth it. And the image quality of DLSS 4 itself, it's generally seen as top notch now, like the benchmark for upscaling. Okay, so a powerful tool, especially if you want the absolute highest frame rates, maybe with ray tracing cranked up, good to know. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about keeping this thing cool and quiet. We mentioned the dual fans earlier. How does this specific MSI cooler actually perform? Right. So MSI calls their cooling design Storm Force inspired. It uses those two fans and a pretty dense aluminum fin stack heat sink underneath. Okay. And the feedback suggests it's actually quite effective for a card in this performance tier, especially if you compare it to maybe some cheaper models that might only have a single fan. So it runs cooler than those leaner designs. Seems like it, yeah. The data points to it running a few degrees cooler and maybe a couple of decibels quieter too compared to some single fan variants. Quieter is always good. 
Nobody likes a jet engine next to them while gaming. Exactly. So under a heavy gaming load, you're probably looking at peak GPU temperatures somewhere in the low 70s Celsius range. Low 70s? That's pretty respectable. Yeah, quite good. And the fan noise is described as more of a gentle hum rather than an annoying whine. So if a quiet PC is important to you, this cooler seems like a definite plus. Lower temps, quieter operation. Definitely appealing. Okay, let's get down to it. The price. Value. What's this card going to cost? Well, the baseline MSRP for the RTX 5060 Ti chip itself was floated around uh, 379 USD. Okay, the base price. Right. But for a custom card like this MSI Inspire 2 XOC with the better cooler, the factory overclock, yeah. you're typically looking at a bit of a premium. Expected street prices seem to be landing somewhere between, say, 430s and $450 USD. So maybe 50 to 70 bucks more for the MSI treatment. Seems kind of reasonable for a better cooler and guaranteed speeds. What about in the UK? Any idea on pricing there? Yeah, over in the UK, the talk is about it hitting that sub 500 pound mark. Sub 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. Which is making it look like a really strong contender for affordable 1440p gaming in that market, especially given, you know, how GPU prices can be. Sure. And this specific MSI card seems to be positioned nicely. You get the factory overclock, which is good, decent build quality, the better cooling, without jumping way up into the, like, super high-end price brackets. So hitting that value sweet spot, Okay, if we were to wrap this all up, what are the absolute key strengths of this MSI RTX 5060 Ti inspired to XOC? Yeah. What makes it stand out? I'd say the main things are, one, the efficient Blackwell architecture, good performance without needing a massive power supplier generating tons of heat. Two, that generous 16 gigs of fast GDDR7 memory, really important for smooth 1440p and even some 4K gaming. Mm -hmm. And three, that dual fan cooler seems genuinely effective, keeping things cool and quiet, put it all together, and it delivers a really smooth, responsive experience at both 1080p and 1440p. But who's the ideal buyer for this? Who should really be looking hard at this car? I think this is a great fit for uh, gamers who are maybe upgrading from something like an RTX 3060 Ti or even an older 20 series card. People who want that solid 1440p experience maybe want to dabble more seriously in ray tracing, but, you know, don't want to spend absolute top dollar. It's a tangible leap in that important mid-range. Yeah, that makes sense. So overall, sounds like the MSI GeForce RTX 5060 Ti 16G Inspire 2 XOC. Yeah is, well, shaping up to be a pretty compelling mid-range option for 2025. It really seems like it. A good balance of performance features and uh, price, hopefully. Offers a strong value proposition, as they say. That's the key takeaway, I think, yes. All right, well, that's been our deep dive into the MSI GeForce RTX 5060 Ti 16G Inspire 2 XOC. Thanks so much for breaking it all down for us today. My pleasure. Always fun to talk hardware. Absolutely. And for everyone listening, as you think about the price, the performance, all the features we discussed, how does this card maybe fit into your gaming plans or maybe even your creative work? And looking even further ahead with the kind of tech we're seeing here, what advancements and graphics are you most excited about based on where things seem to be heading? Definitely some food for thought. Until our next deep dive, take care.